Now, something that happened on Tuesday, right? So after after everything blew up on Monday with the whole, hey, there was a secret meeting and all that, blah, blah, blah. So then they come back on Tuesday and Woody is like, yo, um, I want to fire my lawyer, right? And um, <clears throat> so then the judge brings them in. They pretty much have like a mini hearing or whatever. And the judge is like, uh, Mr. Copeland, um, we're hearing that you don't want this counsel anymore. He's like, she fired. We're going to watch the video. And then, and then, and then, yeah, Trey, they did arrest him the next day. But I'm just saying the fact that somebody let him go at all is, is the crazy part. But so let's, let's look at, we're going to have to break down this video because there's, there's some body language we got to get into. There's some body language that we have to get into, guys. Uh, it has been brought to the court's attention um, that Mr. Copeland's uh, counsel, Ms. Bumpus, would like to be released. Is that correct, madam? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Sir, um, Mr. Copeland, um, is it your desire to release your counsel at this point in time? She fat. <laughs> but you're on the stand. You're testifying at this point in time. So I'm not going to let her withdraw at this point. Well, yeah. Okay, y'all, I want y'all to know that I cut this up into the uh, important parts because this whole thing was long. It was like a 20 to 30 minute back and forth about her trying to get off of this guy's case. Let's get let's get to it. Honor, I just like to say I, I have. Okay, now y'all see the person talking is the, is the person right here in the green, the all green, right? She she came into court and shout out to her. Um, you know, she was look she was looking nice and all that good stuff. And uh but looking nice did not the judge is pissed at her. We know that the judge is pissed at her. He will not let her off this case, and it's because he probably feel like she's trying to duck what's gonna happen. He thinks that she's the one that leaked the inf so this is the lawyer that a lot of people are saying leaked the information to Brian Steele. We're going to look at some body language in this thing here. But this is the lady who supposedly leaked the info to Brian Steele. Now, before we before we uh, get out of pocket, right? Before we get out of pocket, this is something that I want to do. I want to pull something up real quick for y'all. Because we got to figure this out about Ms. Bumpus. This is, this is uh, an advertisement, I guess, for what Ms. Bumpus does. Uh, the type of law she does miss bumpus is a personal injury attorney right she is not uh this is this is not her specialty a case like this is not what she does she is not here for this she was here to help this guy out get through his contempt situation she really just want to show up for you if you got into a car accident if you slipped and fell at job at your job if you you know what i'm saying some like workman's comp type thing she is in way over her head in a case like this everybody she's in a shark pool right now either even kenneth copeland is far more criminal than she has she probably never spoke to a criminal on the level of kenneth copeland that is not what she does at all she got wrapped up in it. So not only did she get wrapped up on her first day working with a criminal at this level and a liar at this level, she is being accused of tampering, of, of leaking information, of corruption. And now all of the fingers are pointing at this lady. And it's looking like if they figure out, if they think that she actually did it, they are going to take her law license. She will be done. Judge Glanville is going is, is going to punish her as best as he can, and they're going to make sure that this lady don't practice law anymore. If she's the one that leaked that information, so I just want y'all to know she was there for one day and got in this level of trouble with Glanville, who is the chief just the chief judge of the Superior Court of Fulton County. He's the he's the big dog. He's the biggest of the big dogs of the judges in Fulton County. This lady got up in here for one day and got jammed up that much. It's like somebody that go on their first robbery and get caught and don't get no money. They get caught on their first robbery. And it's a wrap already. Let's hear what Miss Bumpus has to say. He started testifying. I was fired. I don't know that, ma'am. That's not something that I have notice or knowledge of. So, you know, that's the whole purpose of the rule so that we can flesh out all those things. So at this point in time, I'm not inclined to let you go at this point. Can we approach? 
Can I approach on with the state? No. <laughs> the judge was mad. So first of all, he told her, um, I'm not letting you go. She said, can I approach with the state? He says no. But the, see, this is the thing about the judge. And, and all of us, we have professions that we, we work and we think that we're going to be objective in our job. But the judge clearly, and I'm not mad at him, but the judge clearly has a soft spot for black women attorneys. I'm going to just be real. The judge has a soft spot for black women attorneys. I'm actually not mad at him. The problem is the people that he is uh, <clears throat> extending his sympathy and his compassion to are doing are, are violating the rights of other people right now. You understand what I'm saying? So I do understand that he is, you know, compassionate for black women attorneys. And it seems to me like black attorneys overall. But, you know, you got to be careful with that prosecution right there. Um, and we're going to get into this a little bit more because, we, like I said, we got to get into the body language of this whole thing. Now, she says uh, he says no. And then, like I said, he has a soft spot. So he asked her, well, what do you want to come talk about? And she's like, I don't want to say it in open court. So then he took a long pause and then eventually said, OK, guys, come on up without the defense, though. Let's get let's get back. You see that body language that, that Ms. Bumpers just gave the streets? No. Look at her. Look. What does he want to tell me? <laughs> I can't. I don't want to say it in open court. All right, state, Ms. Bumpus, come on up. My email is regpodcast at gmail.com. S yeah, send me whatever you got. I can't see all of the comments yet, but sometimes I'll pop up and see uh, one every once in a while. So y'all def, I'm going to get to them for sure, but I just saw somebody say they got a comment. Some she made a comment. Okay, so they, they go up there to try to approach. You know the defense and wasn't going I don't believe you have the right to be prison, sir. So <clears throat> the judge had told the, uh, the defense because one of, one of the defense attorneys walked up there with, with them and he's like, back up. You don't have the right to be up here. And then this is uh, Kendrick's lawyer. This is Jack Gotti's lawyer saying, objection, no. This is what y'all tried to do the other day and this is why it was such a big issue and you're about to do it again in our face and y'all think that we're about to stand for this. No, so then let's, let's listen to what he was saying. <laughs> Okay, before we go further, now, the appearance of impropriety, it is something that we covered extensively when we were looking at the Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade disqualification hearing. The appearance of impropriety is essentially enough to get you removed from a case if you are a prosecutor. The appearance of, it doesn't have to be any improprieties. You don't actually have to be doing anything wrong, but you can uh, lose public trust at the appearance of impropriety. And that is a great objection that that uh, Yak Gotti's attorney just made. And he let the judge know, hey, it's not cool with what's going on right now. Essentially, this is what he was saying. It's not cool what's going on right now. The appearance of impropriety, not only is it enough to make an objection, it's enough to get prosecutors and judges removed from cases. 
And that is why in this next clip, you'll see the judge told them, get away from my table. No more. We're not doing that uh, ex parte meeting now. He just brought it up. And that's a fact. So now look, he sent them back packing. No meeting. It's not going to happen. Right? Not going to happen. And Melnick is still this gentleman's. And so y'all see that. I want you to remember. I don't know if some of y'all probably already know about this, but keep in mind the appearance of impropriety. So you have the, the normal, you know, ethical violations, the improprieties. You, do, you did something wrong as a prosecutor. But the appearance of it is enough to cause issues in a trial. Now, this is where I want everybody to look at the body language again. Do y'all see where Bumpus is standing? Bumpus is stand, uh, Attorney Bumpus is standing right behind Hilton and Love. Right. Look at her body language as this stuff is going on, though. Attorney, we don't know that. We really don't know. I don't even know if he's entered an appearance for the purposes of this, the circumstances thereof. But I, but I'm dealing with it from the standpoint of Mr. Copeland is on the stand. He's a witness. He's had counsel. He's going to continue to have counsel. So that's the reason I'm stating it is at this point in time. Okay, sir. But thank you for putting that on the record. Okay. All right. So, Ms. Bumpus, file your motion. Now, y'all see, she is pretty much making a plea. She's pleading to, she is pleading to the, uh, she's pleading to Miss Hilton. What? Uh, I didn't get no email. She's pleading to Miss Hilton to, hey, speak up for me. Help me out. And Miss Hilton wants to speak up for her. They're trying to let, get the judge to let her go. Um... But until such time, you're going to need to remain as long as Mr. Copeland is a is a witness. And once once we've had an opportunity to hear that, then I'll go ahead and do that. But it's not timely to begin with because he's not he's on the stand. He's testifying. OK, so whatever arrangement you had with Mr. Melnick, I'm sorry that that's put you across purposes with um, not being able to be released. I I, I don't know what difficulties it causes you otherwise but i i apologize on behalf of the court on behalf of that but um you're right we did want to the state wanted to put something on the record as well that mr copeland has satisfied at this point his contempt by testifying so if he remains and testifies then unless he wanted there would be no purpose for an attorney so long as he remains and he testifies that's the only only if he pleads the fifth or fails to testify will he be subject to being placed in custody. So at this time, he has purged his or satisfied his contempt because he is testifying. So long as he remains in this posture, then um, we believe the contempt will be completed and he would not need an attorney. So, yes. but I can't say well, that. But that's, that's his choice. That's what the rule gives him 10 days to do. Okay, so... The reason I wanted people to look at the body language and look at, uh, and please like the video. Thank you, Hippie Easter. <clears throat> look at the body language and who Miss Bumpus was making her pleas to for help and assistance. She was making all of these attempts to uh, for help with the prosecution. They're friends, clearly. Bumpus and Hilton are friends. They're f former co-workers. If they're not like actual personal friends, they're definitely professional friends they they are friends in the workplace i found out that miss bump has actually worked for that like work they work together right um hold up man they were working together give me a second let's pull this up <clears throat> do y'all see this is miss bumpus's uh <clears throat> this is miss bumpus's LinkedIn page right here. Do you see the second one down? Assistant district attorney in Fulton County. She worked with them. She worked with them. So this is their former co-worker. And then she went off and started her own law office. Right? She has a personal connection with these people. And I say that to say, I don't believe Bumpus is the leak. She came into this knowing them. They were comfortable with her. She went in that private meeting with the client and the state thinking, 
I'm in here with my people. We can get him to testify. I'm going to help. I'm going to help uh, my friend, Miss Hilton, by getting this guy to testify. I'm going to tell him all the benefits. This is why you should be testifying. And I'm going to tell you something. They need to be looking at somebody else. Brian still has a mole on the inside. They, they might need to look at the court reporter. I'm not blaming her. I don't know what she did. I'm just saying they might need to look at the court reporter. This is the thing. Brian, St nobody left that meeting and told Brian Steele what happened from memory. Brian Steele was given a recording of that meeting. They didn't remember everything said in this long, drawn out meeting. They didn't remember everything said and go tell Brian Steele word for word who said everything and all. That's not what happened. Somebody recorded that meeting and gave it to Brian. They gave a recording to Brian Steele. He knew that the amount of information, he knew the direction of the conversation. He knew exactly who said what, when they said it, what was handed over to who. He knew what was going on as if he was in the room. You see what I'm saying? That's not a game of telephone. That's not somebody who was there and a lot was happening. And then they tried to remember everything and came and told Brian Steele. That's not what happened. And plus, if they did come and tell Brian Steele or they told somebody else they told Brian Steele, they would be able to find somebody passed him a recording. Somebody got a recording to him. You understand what I'm saying? And guess what? Guess what we're going to find out? Let's read the, the items that were said to have happened. So this comes from the appeal that Brian Steele put in. She posted about the meeting. Hold on, y'all. Good evening. Uh, y'all know what? Okay, I got I got the joint right here. Okay, I got the, I got the um. Shout out to Kyle Duvernay. I don't know if you want me to say your name, but shout out. So Bumpus, was she in the uh? Was she in the YouTube chat? Say this. Hey, somebody, let me know. Did she say this in a YouTube chat? This lady said, hold on, y'all. I'm going to put it up on the screen because this, this lady lost her mind. And this is what I, this is, that's the reason why I put up that little flyer for her real job, her job, I mean, not her real job, but her, uh, the type of law that she normally practices, which is personal injury. She was way over her head. You telling me she's being accused of something like this and she went in the YouTube chat to discuss it. This lady done lost her mind, y'all. And, uh, uh I hope it's not her, but yeah, they say she said it in the law and crime chat. Holy moly. I know she didn't do that, man. Come on, y'all. She didn't go in a law and crime chat and say this. The truth going to come to the light. Come on, lady. Let me make, let me make this bigger for y'all. Kayla Bumpus. Let me, let me put up her, uh, let me put her, her business flyer up there too. So we can make sure we, uh, we can make sure we, uh, because it's important. This is important, the type of law that she normally practices. This is important, guys. Okay. Let's let's get let's let's blow her up a little bit. Here we go. This Kayla Bumpus said, I didn't run out of anywhere. I didn't want to be a part of the circus acts and the ex partes going on that will later come to the light soon. Okay, thank y'all for sharing that with me. Now, it could be a fake. It could be a fake account, but I'm not gonna lie to y'all. We know the type of the type of things that fake accounts say. A fake account would normally not say that. I'm not gonna lie to you. So now y'all tell me and put it in the chat, and I'm gonna try to read what y'all are saying. Uh. Yeah. I believe. Thank you. Uh, who is that? Elevation is a must. I, I believe. I'm. I'm agreeing with you about. That's a, that's legit her account. That's her. Um, and I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm not trying to offend Miss Kayla Bumpus. But like I told y'all, she's a personal injury attorney. This case is well beyond her expertise. It's way it's this is this is an advanced criminal hearing trial going on. It's too much for us. We just watching it and we just like it. But the stuff that's really going on is above a lot of our head. We'll find out a lot of what's happening and the legal ramifications of it later also. We're just looking at it and being spectators and trying to give the best opinions that we can. But she said, I didn't run out of anywhere. 
I didn't want to be a part of the circus acts and the ex parte is going on that will come to light later. So how do y'all interpret what she's trying to say? So Matt said that she reported to Melnick what happened and then Melnick told Brian Steele. It was Melnick that sent her email, emailed her to Steele. A CEO told Thug they took Woody to Chambers and then Thug told Steele, then Steele called Woody's mail attorney to get the info. Okay, Mr. Val Mr. Valdez. Now that's the kind of that's the kind of info that I need I need to hear. So that's why Brian Steele is saying this is attorney client privilege. Because if Thug gave him the info, now he really don't have to tell. I mean, he didn't have to tell anyway. But he really don't have to tell if Thug gave it to him. Oh, Miss Kayla Bumpus, you are in trouble, buddy. 